I was uh, asked by Eva Löcherbach uh, not to um, do my usual scientific research talks, but rather to uh, present some challenges and, and, and open problems um, that uh, are in the field of mesoscopic dynamics and metastability. So as a disclaimer, this talk will be a little bit experimental. Um, but let's start. So an important um, type of neural activity that has been frequently observed in, uh, in experiments is a metastable activity. Here are some examples. Here you see recordings, uh, multi-unit recordings from monkey in V4, so in the visual system, uh, a monkey um, who is awake. And you can clearly see that there is, um, uh, is yeah, a repetition of uh, up states, so high activity states and low activity states that changes um, or switches uh, among each other. And this is something that we would um, imagine as metastable activities so that the, the network somehow resides for some time uh, in some state, let's say an up state, and then quickly switches uh, to, to another state. These are this up and down state that had been also uh, observed uh, under, under anesthesia. So this is another experimental recording of, of, of up and uh, down states. Uh, and basically uh, like a sequence of up and down states. Then often uh, this different, uh, this sequence of states is observed by um, yeah, applying a hidden Markov model to uh, uh, parallel spike data. So if one has, uh, when, if one records from many neurons at the same time and then um, uh, infers um, the current state by, by, by a hidden Markov model. <clears throat> so there's a lot of work by uh, Luca Matsukato on uh, metastable dynamics. So in general, what uh, I uh, think about metastable dynamics is that we have uh, sequences of recurring uh, discrete state of population activity, although it's not clear how exactly to define uh, states here. Maybe think of some population activity that <coughs> are only transiently stable and um, uh, at some point switch to, to, to another state, but the switching is really uh, almost instantaneously compared to the time of the uh, metastable dynamics. So in practice, in experiments, one would think of several hundred milliseconds to two seconds uh, that a metastable state is uh, lasting. So that, this is in cortex and hippocampus, there, there are also um, events, sharp wave events or sharp wave ripple events. When, for example, a mouse um, um, goes through some environment like a linear track, and then if it rests or, 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 or sleeps afterwards, uh, a, um, a sequence of, of those neurons that have been activated while the neuron runs through this uh, linear track is uh, replayed. And this gives these uh, also some events that occur on a, on a much faster time scale, so during, during rest or during sleep, but which is sought to uh, replay previously uh, previous tra trajectories in an environment and is thought to be important for uh, memory consolidation. Okay, so there, there are some uh, uh, sharp wave uh, whoops, e events and they typically follow um, yeah, so some uh, exponential like inter-event inter inter interval distribution. 
So metastable activity has also been observed in ne uh, network simulations. So we saw this figure already in the last uh, talk of the webinar. So this <clears throat> is a study by Litvin Kumar and Do Do Wong, who's, um, who uh, considered uh, clusters of, of, of neurons, where neurons within one cluster are more um, more connected than neurons between different clusters. And these kind of Hebbian uh, assemblies or these this, this assemblies, they uh, can um, be active. But because of inhibition, when one assembly or, or several assemblies are, are active, they suppress the other neurons so that one gets um, these uh, stripes in the raster plot. So as a function of time, the spikes of the neurons uh, can be in a low, uh, low activity state or in a high activity state. Um, and the, uh, the configuration of, of clusters that is uh, on at a given time uh, can be seen as um, a metastable state. And this co configuration changes from uh, time to time. <clears throat> Another detailed network simulation of the hippocampus um, has also been recently published um, that shows traveling wave states uh, through a, a network of uh, play cells in the hippocampus. And yeah, so one uh, sees this wave of activity that can be interpreted as this uh, replay of trajectories. And yeah, one, one sees a, one sees like sometimes forward motion and then backward motion, and yeah, that is also a kind of state that changes with this with the silent state and could be um, in, um, interpreted as a complex example of a metastable activity. So the question is, how does uh, metastable dynamics um, emerge in these uh, networks, and what are the underlying uh, mechanisms? So of course, <clears throat> these network simulations um, are based uh, are very complicated models. I call it the microscopic model, where each neuron is modeled individually. But this is uh, too complicated to to get some understanding how certain metastable activity emerges. On the other hand, we can understand a lot uh, with so-called firing rate or neural mass models or Wilson-Cowan type uh, models that assume that we can uh, describe um, groups of neurons by some uh, population activity, let's say A of T. And so A alpha would be the activity of population alpha. So uh, you could imagine that we um, separate a cortical column into eight populations uh, and then describe each population by, by an activity. And the simplest thing what one could do is to say, okay, the activity is uh, some nonlinear function of some uh, potential age alpha, and this obeys uh, some uh, differential equation that uh, sums or integrates the activities from other neurons weighted with some connectivity matrix J alpha beta. So that's a typical firing rate model, but this is in a sense um, <clears throat> too simple. First of all, it's, it's completely heuristic. So there's no, there's no clear link to an underlying microscopic model of spiking neurons. But it also uh, gets the short transient dynamics uh, uh, yeah, wrong. So <clears throat> to illustrate this, uh, I uh, simulated uh, 200 leaky integrate and fire neurons that have been synchronized at time t0, uh, uh, time zero. So you see this uh, line. And over time, the, the PSDH or the 
the, the time dependent firing rate or population firing rate uh, shows initially the strong oscillations or damped oscillations and then over time the activity um, uh, equilibrates and converges or fluctuates around some stationary activity and so the activity is the population activity is the number of spikes in some small time step h divided by n and h and the heuristic uh, firing rate model would just predict essentially uh, an exponential relaxation to the um, to the equilibrium but will not uh, of course capture the the os um, yeah the, the oscillations uh, in the transient dynamics. So these uh, oscillations are due to refractoriness of single neurons. So that's the first challenge. <laughs> um, so single neuron dynamics usually shows pronounced refractoriness and more generally pronounced spike history effects that are usually difficult to incorporate into uh, theories. And here the, the refractoriness acts as follows. After this initial spike, uh, all neurons are in some refractory uh, state because of the reset of integrated fire neurons. And only later they, um, they become non-refractoriness and uh, can fire uh, again. And then again, uh, neurons become refractoriness and uh, the population activity uh, uh, goes um, through a minimum and this um, oscillations go go on but there's uh, some coherence length of course so <clears throat> that's one uh, so this getting this this uh, trends in dynamics correct is uh, difficult so one needs to uh, extend this type of models or we want would like to extend this type of, of models so another problem is finite size fluctuations. So that will be the second uh, basic challenge. Um, so you see already in this uh, figure that uh, the population activity uh, fluctuates around uh, the, uh, the mean value. And this is in simply because we have a finite number of neurons. So in this case, only 200. And this leads to, to, uh, to fluctuations. Okay, so that's a, that's, that's a challenge. So first, uh, uh, if one looks into experiments, one finds sometimes that the number uh, of neurons for relevant populations are not huge, but only on the order of uh, 100 or, 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 or 1,000. Here you see, a study from the Patterson lab, uh, which counted uh, excitatory neurons and inhibitory neurons in the different layers of the somatosensory cortex of red. And one sees that there are maybe around 1000 uh, excitatory neurons and maybe 50 inhibitory neurons. So this is not a large number in terms of mean field um, limits or, or, or mean field approximations. And I will call uh, a scale where populations have on the order of 100 to 1,000 neurons, the mesoscopic uh, scale. And more practically, mesoscopic, I will call any description or any scale where fluctuations are important. So here's uh, another illustration of this uh, finite size effect of these fluctuations. Um, it's just uh, uh, yeah, an ensemble of inhomogeneous uh, Poisson processes that produce events in time. Now, computing for this, um, <clears throat> for this uh, system of Poisson processes, the population activity would re result in a very fluctuating um, uh, curve. For if we have 100 neuro, if we calculate the population activity over 100 neurons, but then this converges by the law of large numbers 
basically to the uh, to the mean and at this <clears throat> fluctuations at small number of neurons this is called finite this i call finite size noise and this can be important uh, um, in in the population for the population dynamics okay so after this introduction i will uh, present you uh, a theory that works for a finite size population of integrate and fire neurons so it's, um, it gives a rather accurate um, approximation of the population activity and of the statistics. And it is uh, valid for homogeneous populations. So then uh, this has several uh, limitations, this, um, this theory. And in particular, um, um, it poses several challenges. So first, the first challenge I will uh, talk about is uh, how to actually reduce this, um, the population dynamics the, for the integrated fire population to, to simpler uh, stochastic differential equations in the spirit of Wilson-Cowen equations that then are analytically tractable. Uh, and the second challenge is I will ask whether we can learn something about the, uh, the dynamics and the type of noise from looking at metastable dynamics using mesoscopic models. And to this end, I will first look at a model with synaptic depression as a fatigue mechanism and will uh, contrast uh, fatigue-induced and noise-induced transition in between metastable states. And then I will look at the second uh, example with adaptation and will uh, show that the uh, type of noise, or whether it's finite size noise, um, I call it also demographic noise, or external additive noise has a very has very different if, uh, effect on the statistics of metastable states. And if uh, time permits, I will address uh, very briefly uh, uh, very important um, uh, challenge in theoretical neuroscience, and this is heterogeneity. So uh, we rarely deal with homogeneous. Uh, populations, but there's a lot of heterogeneity, especially the synaptic connectivity is uh, highly structured um, in order uh, so, uh, to perform some computations uh, with, with the network. So I will have, uh, I will shortly sp speak about this too. Okay, so let's look at the model <clears throat> for uh, the first part. So on the microscopic level, where we model each neuron individually, we have these equations. So each neuron is de described by membrane potential U. Uh, there's some leak current minus U, there's some external drive mu uh, of T, and there is a reset to, to, to a reset potential, in this case to, to zero. And there is uh, the recurrent um, input from other neurons. In this case, we only look at uh, these equations are only for, for one population. It's a fully connected network and the weight scale is like one over n. <clears throat> Furthermore, these neurons are stochastic because spikes are uh, um, drawn um, by from a stochastic intensity function f of uh, u, which is uh, typically um, yeah, either an exponential function or um, or a, a, a threshold linear function. So that uh, is a counting process uh, with this intensity. So um, yeah, I don't know whether that is, the model is clear. Uh, 
So it has also been termed, um, so this, this type of stochasticity has also been termed escape noise. So it's basically an, a leaky integrated fire neuron with uh, escape noise. All right. Um, so it is possible to uh, derive uh, with some approximations a population model on the mesoscopic scale that looks as follows. Uh, Z uh, would be the uh, spy count of the population and it is, is um, it is a spike train with intensity n times a bar, where uh, a bar is given by, <coughs> uh, by, an, by an integral. So it, uh, it depends on the history of the spikes um, z. And these spikes are propagated to uh, time t via this uh, term lambda times s, which is essentially the interspike interval of a neuron that's spiked at time s in the past um, to have uh, the next spike at uh, time t. And this integral uh, uh, integrates over all possible uh, last spike times. So then there is a second term that is uh, important for the stability of this uh, model. And that captures, yeah, that basically um, ensures the, the conservation of, uh, of neurons. So now what are this uh, lambda and S functions? So lambda is the intensity of, of, of or can be imagined as the intensity of a neuron that um, has spiked at time s, uh, yeah, the intensity at time t for a neuron that had this last spike at time s. And it basically is a function of, um, of this membrane potential function uh, u. Okay, so this is a rather um, complicated uh, stochastic uh, integral equation. However, it's completely mesoscopic, so there's no single neuron activity anymore, and it provides very accurate um, uh, predictions of the, of the statistics of the population activity. And it can be simulated on a computer quite uh, uh, efficiently. So I would like to maybe point you to this uh, archive, uh, recent archive paper, where, there's an, where we provide a very efficient simulation algorithm and where we also explain uh, uh, this uh, correction term that uh, leads to the stability of this uh, dynamics. Okay, <clears throat> so let's uh, see how, uh, yeah, how it performs. So first, we consider just a population of 200 uncoupled uh, integrate and fire neurons. So this is a simulation. Then the population rate A bar uh, shows exactly this uh, ringing behavior. If, if you simulate our mesoscopic uh, equation and it uh, well reproduces uh, visually <laughs> the time dependent course of the mean uh, population activity. And it is also stable uh, over longer times, whereas um, a mesoscopic model without this correction factor would be unstable. But I will not talk about this here. More importantly is that we can capture the fluctuations. So if one computes the power spectrum of the fluctuations in the steady state, so in this part, then we get uh, such uh, frequency spectrum from the microscopic simulations. But we can also compute the power spectrum from the mesoscopic simulation. And this matches uh, almost perfectly the, 
the, the spectral structure of, <coughs> of the population activity. Okay. So uh, a second example is, um, is, a meta, is, is a network that has meta stability. So there has been a lot of models that try to explain uh, perceptual rivalry. So probably uh, you know this uh, example of a, of a NECA cube where the perception switches uh, from time to time. One seeing the, uh, this square in front and another time you see this square in the, in the back. And there have been models uh, that, uh, or neural network models that, that could explain this uh, by stability. And uh, one typical or simple model would be a network that consists of three populations, two excitatory populations and one inhibitory population. So these excitatory populations are indirectly uh, connected via this inhibitory population. And in this way, one can, uh, this dynamics becomes, a, um, yeah, makes competition. So when one activity uh, spontaneously goes up, then it will inhibit the other population. So there's a, a winner take all mechanism here. Dynamically, this, uh, the mean field equations uh, predict two uh, attractors between which the system can now switch. But the switching here is purely caused by the finite size noise. So it's a, if you make simulations of this uh, network of 400 excitatory neurons per, per population and 200 inhibitory neurons, we see that the population activity uh, switches, uh, let's say, of the, the activity of the, uh, the um, violet or pink or magenta um, population switches between uh, an up state and a down state uh, with a more or less exponential uh, waiting time. And we can also simulate the mesoscopic inter uh, stochastic integral equation that also shows these up and down states, whose statistics is almost perfectly matched. So the power spectrum of this up and down state uh, time series um, is, matches very well the microscopic simulation and also the waiting time statistics with so the dwell times in each state are uh, very, very well uh, matched. So that's um, um, so that's a nice. So a second um, more recent example is uh, also a multi-population uh, model where populations are distributed on a ring. And <clears throat> in this case, I slightly uh, we or we slightly modified the network. Uh, we did not have a reset, but, but an absolute refractory period, so a period of silence where neurons are not allowed to spike um, after each spike. And populations are connected with a, um, with a coupling that depends on the distance of, uh, on, the, on the ring, so typical Mexican head type coupling. And yeah, for, um, for, for such a setup of neurons with absolute refractory uh, period, the stochastic integral equation uh, simplifies uh, to the following. So here, the, the activity A bar is essentially this um, link function F of U, so now it's phi of U, sorry. <laughs> Um, multiply so that's the, um, yeah, the intensity function given the membrane potential U uh, <clears throat> multiplied with uh, one minus the integral over the past refractory period. 
um, of the activity. So this gives the, um, the fraction of neurons that are in a refractory state at time t. So u um, is given by this um, differential equation. And at any given time, t, the population activity is drawn um, with intensity n times a bar, or if n is large, we can make a diffusion approximation and write a approximately as a bar plus a noise term that uh, scales proportional to the square root of the rate and inversely proportional to the a number of neurons per population. And Xi alpha here is a Gaussian white noise. So basically, so that's the physicist notation for basically the derivative of the Wiener process that I will uh, use in the following. <clears throat> so this um, system and simulating can actually um, create a localized uh, bump activity, which uh, has been a model for working memory. And this bump for n, for finite n, can uh, um, diffuse uh, along the ring because this model has a, a line attractor uh, structure. So, uh, so, this, so basically we analyzed the uh, diffusion of the bump. So the, the bump center will make a, actually a diffusion process that uh, uh, depends whether the uh, diffusivity depends on the number of, of neurons. And uh, Bastian uh, was a postdoc uh, here uh, in my group. Uh, he was able to calculate the uh, um, diffusion uh, coefficient. So the uh, variance of the um, displacement of the, of the bump as a function of time uh, grows linearly with a diffusion coefficient that he was able to um, calculate actually uh, by taking a continuum version of this, uh, calculating a, con uh, a continuum equation of this uh, ring model. So that, that's already a challenge uh, on itself to, to write down uh, uh, the continuum limit um, <clears throat> uh, for finite n. Okay. Um, what you also found uh, is, uh, or what you could calculate is also the, um, the dependence on the refractory period. So essentially, he found that uh, refractoriness uh, uh, decreases the, uh, the diffusion of the bump activity. So however, uh, a lot of things are not understood here <laughs> uh, yet. Um, <clears throat> so for example, at some point, this, um, these bumps become unstable and we, don't, we, don't, we have not understood uh, yet, so well, why? Okay, so I skip this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me um, uh, show you the limitations or, or, or list the limitations uh, of the stochastic integral uh, uh, equation that is quite. Uh, accurate for reproducing the, the statistics, especially it captures uh, spike history effects like refractoriness, but also adaptation. So I have not spoken, I have, haven't spoken about that uh, here. Then it, uh, it causes the finite size, or it, it, it captures the finite size fluctuations uh, very well. It is, uh, bottom-up model that links to the microscopic parameter. So it does not contain any free parameter. There's no um, ad hoc. Um, yeah. uh, it's, it's not an uh, heuristic equation, but it really uh, 
has been derived from, from a microscopic uh, model. And it also allows uh, efficient parameter inference from mesoscopic uh, data. So there's some interesting um, uh, papers uh, recently that have used our, our method. <coughs> And yeah, that's because one can directly write down the, log, the, 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 likelihood, the likelihood function uh, for this uh, model, given the mesoscopic data. Okay, that's nice, but there are also limitations. So it's, it's, it's a quite complicated uh, dynamics. So we would like to actually um, reduce uh, the complexity and get something like a stochastic differential equation or a system of stochastic differential equations. Um, <clears throat> then the problem is, uh, yeah, the uh, analytical tractability. So we'd like to have a, a, a simple model where we can understand um, the effect of different types of noise and also different uh, types of um, uh, dynamics, whether it's bistable or limit cycle dynamics or some other attractor. Um, so that's, that's very difficult with the stochastic integral equation. Then we assumed a fully connected uh, network, but um, we are currently also working on extension to a random connectivity, so how to uh, uh, describe the effect of quenched randomness disorder in the connectivity um, by, uh, yeah, by, by by suitable noise terms in the uh, in the population dynamics. Then <clears throat> we assumed homogeneous populations, but as I already mentioned. In biology, networks are usually uh, highly structured. There's a lot of heterogeneity. Then our uh, synaptic connections were static, but we know that uh, the synaptic weights uh, can also uh, change uh, in time and that they also depend on the activity. So there's short-term um, plasticity, like depression and facilitation of synapses and also also, of course, long-term plasticity. And <clears throat> in order to apply these equations to uh, experimental data, there's another problem that usually we do not know the population activity because one never records from all the neurons. Um, so one may think how to treat um, hidden neurons or unobserved neurons. Uh, in this part, for the first challenge, I tried to uh, go towards a reduction to a low dimensional stochastic differential equation. Essentially, we, we look at, on a microscopic level, um, again, uh, at a leaky integrated fire model with escape noise. Now the input is filtered. Um, with some time constant tau h. Yeah, and spikes are generated stochastically with a stochastic intensity f of u. <clears throat> to, the, the idea is to, uh, to, to do a similar approach as researchers have done for the Fokker-Planck equation that had not escape noise, but uh, Gaussian white noise on the membrane potential. And, and there's a, a body of work that has systematically uh, reduced the Fokker-Planck equation in, uh, in terms of eigenmodes of the, of the Fokker-Planck operator. And this gives then uh, dynamical or, or um, ODEs for, uh, for, for these uh, eigenmodes. And we can do something very similar with our integral equation that can be rewritten as a refractory density uh, PDE. 
uh, I won't go into detail here, but one can look at the um, probability density of the time since the last spike, also called the age of, of, of the neuron. So the, the time that has elapsed since the last uh, spike. So that's uh, the state variable tor. And one can uh, describe the evolution of the density of this age uh, <clears throat> by this first order uh, PDE that is essentially um, given by a continuity equation with uh, sink and source terms. So the sink term would be the spiking of neurons with a rate uh, that depends on the age tau, which in turn is a nonlinear function f of u of tau. And because neurons that, that spike at a given age with a rate rho of tau are reset at age zero. So after a spike, the age renew, uh, renews to, um, to, to zero, we get in the PDE an influx term at uh, at zero, which can be written by this uh, Dirac delta uh, source term. <clears throat> and for the conservation um, of probability, uh, the activity must, uh, must be uh, the probability density times the uh, you know, weighted by the rate integrated over all uh, ages. So this density is, uh, con uh, is normalized at all, or, or at all times, so the integral is uh, 1. So maybe in the interest of time I will not uh, go into detail, details here, but uh, we can essentially write down uh, system of equations for the um, for the coefficients of the eigenmodes a n which is uh, which are complex numbers and they obey this uh, differential equation in the n to infinity limit so that's uh, you can find more details in this uh, PIE paper and uh, yeah the idea would be to truncate this um, uh, this system, this infinite system of differential equations after, let's say, the first or second uh, mode. So that's, uh, this captures uh, refractoriness, but not finite size uh, um, noise. So here, it's a, it, if, if one simulates this uh, dynamics in a deterministic uh, model here, one can reproduce the damped oscillations in the for the initial transient uh, quite well. Already is taking into account the dominant eigenvalue of this operator. Uh, so that's basically very similar to, um, to this uh, old work, which dates back to Bruce Knight. However, we can take our integral equation and apply the eigenfunction method to, uh, to this stochastic integral equation. And, and then, but in, 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 if you write down the refractory density method, the probability P is not actually a probability density anymore. It's not a, a conserved quantity, but it, it's a fluctuating a quantity. So A0 is something that is stochastic in time. And <clears throat> if one does the eigenfunction expansion, one gets this um, system of, um, of equations. So um, essentially, uh, we have an age variable um, that uh, should be f of h here, sorry, um, that gives the uh, expected rate at time t, and then uh, one randomizes uh, the actual population activity 
has the mean rate plus this Gaussian white noise um, that scales inver inversely proportional to the square root of n. And the, um, the refractoriness and these oscillations that come into play in, in this second term that depend on this um, higher, uh, higher uh, coefficients um, of the eigenmode. Okay, uh, one can simulate this and obtain uh, a better approximation than previous series by uh, Mauricio Matia, who had a similar idea, but um, they did not take into account that this A0 is uh, fluctuating. So what you see here is the power spectrum of the population activity, and it uh, matches here uh, very well if it takes 30 modes in, into account. Um, if you have only three, uh, if you have only a three-dimensional system, then we get the low frequency power uh, correct in contrast to previous works, but there's still some uh, issues uh, in the intermediate frequency range that we do not know uh, yet how to uh, yeah, um, solve that. One can also <clears throat> consider neuro, uh, a network of neurons that has strong low frequency power. So when neurons are, have more bursty dynamics, then our theory or our low dimensional dynamics for with, yeah, with three dimensions uh, works uh, quite uh, good and is somehow better. But uh, yeah, so it, it may look uh, nice uh, at this uh, figure, but there are still some um, problems. So we, it's usually difficult to, to compute these, uh, these C factors. Uh, I even did not write it what, what it is. And yeah, sometimes one needs to take into account uh, really like 30 modes to get a decent approximation of the power spectrum. Let's go to this uh, second challenge, uh, in particular to the part on synaptic depression. Um, so for metastability, there are two popular models so, that have been used. So one is that transitions between uh, metastable states are induced by noise and that somehow there are multiple attractors and the noise will kick the system um, to another attractor and then there will be a sequence of <coughs> different metastable states. So uh, this is an uh, old paper by Moreno Bote who illustrated this uh, by stability by noise induced transitions and a potential picture. But the the other view is that <clears throat> the transitions are deterministic and, and induced by some slow fatigue process like adaptation or depression and noise is not really necessary. So the, in this um, face plane picture, uh, the model would uh, reside for a long time at a low rates here and then make a quick transition uh, to this other uh, attractor, then it would stay for a long time again in this uh, region and then make a quick uh, transition to the, to the other uh, attractor. So that's uh, like a slow, fast uh, system. And there have been a lot of uh, discussions which of the mechanisms is uh, uh, responsible for certain metastable activity uh, in the brain and yeah there have been a lot of papers on 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 that so we <clears throat> we thought that uh, we should build a bottom up uh, model for uh, metastable activity that is not hol holistic but where the uh, where we see the 
how, how noise could emerge on a population level and yeah, what is um, yeah, uh, what, what, what would be the link to uh, to the underlying um, microscopic model so we uh, used uh, a, non a linear nonlinear Poisson neuron model or also Hawks process type uh, model where however the uh, synaptic weights are dynamic uh, factors so then this uh, uh, this um, yeah linear um, a filter of the inputs mu and uh, the recurrent inputs um, yeah, drive uh, an intensity function and a corresponding spike train. So these dynamic factors u and x, they follow the standard uh, dynamics um, by Zodix and Markram, that's short-term plasticity. Uh, essentially, X could be seen as the avail availability of synaptic resources at, uh, at, at synapse uh, at J. So there's some um, yeah, activity dependent um, um, uh, biophysical mechanism be, um, behind. That's, um, uh, that's standard. So at each uh, spike uh, of a neuron, it's uh, X variable or depression variable would uh, decrease. There's a jump uh, down at each spike. And uh, U would be a facilitation variable that, however, we will not uh, uh, consider in, uh, in, this, uh, in this talk. So we, we set it, uh, U to a constant. Uh, so we don't have this uh, U dynamics, but only the depression dynamics. And we consider here for the, um, linear filter, a simple exponential uh, kernel so that we can uh, rewrite this dynamics <coughs> as a differential equation that uh, has a membrane potential dynamics, Hi, and a depression variable, Xi, so per neuron. And Si SJ are the spike trains of neuron J and they are uh, weighted by this dynamic factor XJ. Okay, so for this, we uh, derived a mesoscopic model uh, using the method uh, of a chemical Langevin equation uh, proposed by uh, Gillespie. And the result is a three-dimensional um, stochastic differential equation where we have here Gaussian white uh, noise, psi of, uh, of t, uh, the, and the magnitude of the noise is again inversely proportional to the square root of n. So for n to infinity, this noise term vanishes and the dynamics does not, uh, the dynamics of h and x uh, does not depend on Q anymore. So the HX system decouples from the Q uh, dynamics. So, so this allows us to uh, make a phase plane analysis because uh, the deterministic model is, is just two dimensional. And we actually reproduced a, a model of up and down state by Holtmann and Sodex um, that was more like a heuristic model. But now with our bottom-up model, where we see uh, this um, uh, yeah, down and up state uh, switchings, and the statistics is um, very well reproduced by uh, by the um, stochastic uh, differential equation. So the microscope, the power spectrum of the of um, population activity um, is the, are, are the circles uh, of the, in the microscopic model and our uh, stochastic differential equation would be the orange curve uh, 
fits very well. We have even a further improvement that takes into account the shot noise character, so the point process character of the, of, of the noise, and that perfectly matches. Um, okay, so then we applied this to a hippocampal replay. Uh, it's already. <laughs> Maybe I skip over this part. Uh, where we find uh, also traveling waves, but they are now uh, uh, noise induced instead of deterministic, as in the previous model by Romani and Sodex, which is kind of a, fa a famous model for uh, sharp waves in the hippocampus. Uh, I skip through this, uh, so we get a, a more random alternation of this traveling waves with a more exponential inter-event uh, interval distribution and uh, no correlations between forward and backward directions of the uh, traveling waves, which seems maybe more realistic. That we also looked at the model with adaptation. So basically we have again a uh, an LNP neuron that uh, has a fatigue mechanism given by adaptation. So this membrane potential has a minus A and A is driven by the spikes um, of neuron I. So we can get uh, a mesoscopic uh, model, a stochastic uh, differential equation, two dimensional, uh, of this form that arises from a microscopic uh, uh, description. And again, we have this demographic noise that depends on the activity itself and inversely proportional to the square root of n. And <clears throat> this model has been, or has been used actually to um, make, uh, not, not this model, uh, a similar model, I, okay, we'll come to this. So this, this, this model can show different dynamics and depending on the parameters, can be in a limit cycle regime uh, with noise, it can be bistable, so depending on how the null clines are uh, located in the, in the phase plane. Uh, it can be in an excitable state, excitable up, where there's a stable uh, equilibrium in the up state and then only uh, from time to time the system makes an excursion towards the down state or the excitable down state where, the, where there is a stable a state in the at low activity and only from time to time the system makes an excursion to, to the up state. So people have fitted this uh, uh, such a model to real data and um, made statements about the, uh, uh, the, dyna the dynamical regime in, in, in the cortex and the, uh, in the hippocampus campus, but they used uh, a model with additive noise, something like, uh, like this, uh, and not with multiplicative noise that would uh, arise from finite size fluctuations or from, from the finite number of neurons and, uh, and, the, uh, and, and the spiking noise. So we wondered, uh, so, so first we, we uh, undergraduate student made a lot of observations and showed that actually the conclusions on the dynamical regimes uh, strongly uh, depend on the type of noise uh, that we have in, in, in our model. So it's basically the same model, but, uh, but different noise. Here we have multiplicative noise uh, for the finite size case. And here there's just an additive noise, like a, a phenomenolo phenomenological noise term. And since this, um, um, place uh, is quite sensitive to the type of noise, we wondered whether we can actually see the noise type um, uh, from the statistics of up and down states, whether there is some, uh, whether we can distinguish between the two types of uh, noise. <clears throat> so can be inferred from the up and down states. And what turned out to be uh, most uh, informative are serial correlations uh, in, the, in the durations of the up and down states. So if you think of the, um, of this up and down states, 
then you could extract uh, like the upstate, downstate, upstate, downstate, upstate, downstate. So it's actually not trivial to to actually extract these up and down state to duration to so find good criteria for for that. But um, yeah, you, you 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 can do that and then can compute the, the, the correlation coefficient between uh, the, let's say, the down state and the following up state and the, uh, yeah, and also the up state to the following down state, let's say, so neighboring, neighboring uh, state durations. And uh, for me, it was a bit un unexpected to see that actually the, this picture, so if one plots the, uh, the, the correlation of the, uh, between down and following up state uh, versus the correlation between up state and following down state, one gets often something that is uh, above, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, above the unity line. So, so here, the, these, these different points are different parameters of the system. So there's a, so the, the, the parameter space has been sampled uh, over a wide range and each dot is corresponds to, to one parameter, but uh, it's the, these points don't lie on the identity line, which would, would be my uh, first expectation. But in the case of multiplicative noise, uh, the correlation between upstate and following downstate are often uh, larger than the correlations between uh, the downstate and the following upstate. And this was, uh, or this is a kind of a uh, yeah, miracle still, uh, <laughs> well, not a miracle, but uh, we have not fully understood this yet and we want to build a, a, a theory for, uh, for that. So, so that's, uh, basically, uh, for multiplicative noise, so for finite size noise, and with additive noise, it's almost the same. So, uh, so the, the how to understand this, I think, is the following. <clears throat> so here is a phase uh, plane picture and, and one trajectory, and the noise in the down state is smaller than in the up state. So this 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 affects. Um, also the, um, some of the correlations, and this can be understood in this limit uh, case. So we actually, we, we, we took a, um, a little bit um, simpler piecewise linear uh, a system where the null clients have this piecewise linear uh, shape, and there's a limit cycle regime. And red is a trajectory, a noisy trajectory, that uh, goes around the limit cycle, but in in this special case, you can also switch off the noise in the down state and on, only have noise in the up state. And for this limit case, uh, where there's only noise in the up state and no noise in the down state, one can understand that there shouldn't be any correlations between the down state and the following up state, because uh, what correlates uh, these, uh, these durations are the points um, that um, where the, the, the adaptation variable, where the, where the system uh, jumps. So for example, uh, if, there is a sh if there's a short up state, uh, the system jumps at a basically, um, earlier time and the adaptation is rather small, it would make a transition uh, down here. And would re this would result uh, in a travel time, a sojourn time from, uh, from here to, oops, sorry, uh, to the next switching point that is also shorter. So after a short up state, there will be a short um, down state. So that explains the, um, the positive correlations. However, the duration in the up state is completely independent of the duration of uh, in the down state because all trajectories go or jump at the same adaptation variable because there's no noise in the, uh, in the down state by, by construction. And so the, 
the correlations between down and following up state is zero and the correlation between up state and following down state is uh, is, is positive so this uh, simple uh, limit case already i think ex 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 probably explains the main thing that's going on here okay so i think i will skip uh, this it's about structure uh, uh, that is, so a lot of networks like the Hopfield network and other networks are uh, highly heterogeneous and I think one needs to 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 look at other um, at other variables uh, rather than the population activity uh, so in some cases, like in this particular network that we looked at here, it's pretty clear what are the relevant mesoscopic variables for which one could try to derive a stochastic differential equation, like a mean field dynamics. Yeah, and we have succeeded uh, succeeded uh, this uh, for the so-called predictive coding uh, network by uh, Berlin, Machens, and Deneff. Um, uh, so I showed that um, the stochastic integral equation accurately captures metastable mesoscopic dynamics of neurons with refractoriness. And I presented some challenges. So uh, how to incorporate uh, synaptic short-term plasticity and especially short-term depression into a mesoscopic uh, framework. Uh, I did not talk about structured connectivity, uh, unfortunately, but uh, I also talked a little bit uh, how we could infer the type of noise, multiplicative or additive uh, a noise from the statistics of the up and down states. <clears throat> and also the, um, for, 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 for the case of the three-play dynamics, uh, we can actually also give some, make some hypothesis on how to test whether the dynamics is fluctuation-driven or fatigue-driven. However, uh, in all of these um, problems here, uh, we assumed or we ne neglected refractoriness. So it's, uh, I think, extremely hard to in include the effect of uh, refractoriness in, in, in many cases. Okay, so I would like to uh, st um, stop here and uh, also thank um, uh, Bastian who uh, did um, um, uh, uh, a lot of this work. Uh, uh, Valentin uh, Schmutz, who also was involved in the uh, replay uh, dynamics. Uh, I forgot to, to put the picture of, of Eva Löcherbach uh, also here. Also, thank you to uh, uh, to uh, to you, who was also in, in, uh, in involved in in the stochastic integral e equation part and the proof of the, the stabilities and. Uh, there has also been contribution by Wolfram Gerstner and Moritz Deger. Okay, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Thilo, for the very nice presentation. Uh, we have some, uh, anyone had some question or comment that you want to do? So there's nice statistics to be done in this, uh, what you call theory of uh, theory correlations, no? So the, the pictures that you showed us, were they based on simulations? I guess no. Yeah. Uh, yes, the, um, this was just uh, empirical, just as uh, simulations, so that we see this asymmetry in the case of multiplicative noise or finite size noise, and um, yeah, we uh, we, we we want to actually derive some formulas that. Um, Describe this um, this correlations uh, for 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 a simple toy model. I mean, main effect is that in the down state the noise is small, and in the up state the noise is large, and this gives some um, yeah, unexpected effects. I have a question also about the simulations because you show some simulations with some uh, fluctuations in the uh, spike yes. activity at the beginning, and. Yes. Uh, 
I have an impression you told us that actually what ha what happens is you have a high uh, spiking and then you have some repertory period that make you have some silent period, right? Yes. But this will depend strongly on your initial conditions in the simulations, right? If you start with some uh, very few uh, energy in your system, uh, you will not have these situations, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's. Uh, I started uh, the system basically uh, all neurons being at the reset, just just being resetted. Uh, it's like a synchronized initial condition, so that means all neurons spike uh, at immediately before time zero, and this is. Yeah, course a strong um, yeah, far away from I don't know the I don't know equilibrium activity or so um, <clears throat> because of this forced synchronization you see this uh, uh, yeah the synchronous activity uh, in the uh, uh, in the transient time um, so the neurons are still synchronized by the initial conditions and another question, uh, you told us that actually this uh, up and down uh, uh, symmetry states. Or states and correlations, uh, this, uh, as you just told us, comes from some simulations. And what actually happens in real data, you know, how they are correlated? Uh, yeah, we looked in several um, um, data um, and several preparations, and um, yeah, it's there's a lot of difficulties uh, when when looking into uh, data. <laughs> uh, first of all, so it assumes a stationarity uh, that we can compute these. Um, Correlations. We need uh, like a sequence of uh, at least I don't know hundred of these up and down states, uh, or, or that, that is somehow or less. So there are no no trends or so in this um, in this data. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes we see um, correlations that are not as in our model. Uh, there's a lot of interesting questions. So maybe the the noise is not white noise but colored noise. Maybe there is uh, also the effect of, um, I mean, in, I mean, in, in, in the cortex, there's also inhibitory neurons, so excitatory and inhibitory neurons. Uh, we do not have this in our model. We have only ex as an excitatory population. Um, yeah. Uh, then in cell cultures, we also looked at um, up in. Uh, down state in, in, in cell cultures, uh, uh, we see a little bit uh, like this correlations, but the, uh, the statistical significance <laughs> is not, uh, I, I'm not, not so 100% sure yet. <clears throat> but we are further looking into the, uh, yeah, we would like to actually see it in the, in the data. <laughs> and some signature of finite size noise, finite size induced. Uh, uh, transitions. Uh, a very naive question. Uh, do you do you think uh, it's possible to evaluate the quality variation? Uh, I mean, you, you, your question is, is is it better to use a model with additive noise or some multiplicative noise? Uh, okay, so the question is, what is the diffusion coefficient? And do you think that the data? Are such that uh, <laughs> okay you can just match. I mean this uh, these qualitative differences um, uh, are more or less independent of the no of the noise uh, intensity. I, I think so. Whether you can get. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this asymmetry in the correlation coefficient, uh, so you will not get a strong asymmetry in an additive noise model, no matter how large uh, you, you choose your um, um, noise intensity. 
I mean, uh, <laughs> so 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 we looked at uh, so the, the, the student did a lot of um, uh, searched the, the parameter space and could actually uh, classify quite well the the the, di the dynamics uh, the dynamical regime and the type of uh, noise but also taking into account like the CV of the up state and, and down state. So, but the correlations were the most important part uh, in, in this. So, uh, of course, we don't know the, the noise strengths uh, in this. Um, although uh, in, in our model, it's, it's not a free parameter. It's, it's just basically this, post, uh, you know, given by the, by, the, by the activity and by the number of neurons. But we don't know the number of neurons. Um, also. Um, 